The Grey Goose, Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. Revenge is sweet, I thought, as Barbara and I managed to dispose of those who, just for a short time, had hoodwinked us. And filled with these pleasant thoughts of revenge gratified, I was startled to hear the raucous tones of a newspaper man yelling his headlines in the street below my window. I went down to my front door to get uh, a closer listen to my friend the newsboy. Here, paper boy. Here you are, sir. Last edition. Oh, ta. Sensational stock exchange cable. Millions of final edition. Back in my rooms, I read the front page news. Just another victory for a big financial group. Simply put, they had declared a dead loss and a complete dry up of oil in the Rising Sun venture. Thousands rushed to sell at any price. It appears, I'm quoting now, Mr. Henry J. Markham, a director of Rising Sun, was convinced that oil had not petered out. He endeavoured to restore confidence by buying up large holdings wherever and whenever they came on the tumbling market. Mr. Markham's confidence was rewarded overnight, as definite indications are now manifesting themselves that oil is by no means absent from rising sun. <laughs> Reading this, the name of Markham rang a bell. So next evening, I buzzed the flat Barbara occupies at the back of mine. Hello? Is that you, Rowley? Yes. Oh, I'm glad you're in. Push your button and come through the hole in the wall. I've got something to show you. Well, what's so engrossing in that paper? You really must remember, Barbara, to close that bookcase wall as you come in. Oh, sorry, Rowley. There now. And now, I want you to look at this evening's paper, The Social Gossip. Good heavens. Uh -huh. Something registered, eh? Henry J. Markham, company director and well-known businessman, purchased recently the grand old Georgian manor, Staple Manor, in Warwickshire. Inset. A picture of his debutante daughter, Catherine, shortly to be presented at court. Markham. Henry J. Ring a bell? Good heavens, it rings a crashing multitude of bells. Markham was... Yes, Markham was one of the 40 thieves. He was my father's right-hand man. His evidence at the time practically put my father in jail. But it was lies. Lies, lies. Most people didn't think so, but I do. Thank you, Rowley. I think after reading last night's paper, it's time we crossed another name off your list. Markham? Guest in one, my dear. Markham is our next call, and if possible, Master Henry J will be made to toe the line. Yes, I think from the latest news, the Grey Goose would like to see him. So it's hey for Warwick, the home of the Mar of Avon, and that rather more unworthy citizen, Henry J Markham. What do I do? This, my favourite actress. Scanning through the ads, I find they're short of chambermaids at Staple Manor. You are going to get the job. And after that, we shall put into practice certain, um, malpractices and achieve, I hope, the downfall of one more of your father's rotten crew of scoundrels. Thank you, Rowley. a peach in that cabin apron. <laughs> I suppose the first footman and the chauffeur have all made passes at you. Being a chambermaid with the low stairs wolves in every nook and cranny is no fun, believe me. Even the senile butler of 60-odd is looking for new places to pinch. <laughs> well, confound it, you're quite an eyeful even in this pale moonlight. Now, let's be serious. How's the fair Catherine Markham? A dreadful little... I know the exact word you're looking for, and I'm glad. Glad? Yes, because my intentions towards her won't go so much against the grain. What do you intend? A little matter of kidnapping, my dear. Kidna... But you... Yes, and that is why you are first chambermaid in Staple Manor. Now listen carefully. Here are your instructions. 
Here, in this glass tube, is an incendiary powder. Incendiary? Oh, not much, but very effective. Used very extensively by the Germans when they tried to burn down London. Here also is a coil of wire attached to a fairly good dry battery. Weighs about half a pound. Anything else? I'm not Samson, you know. No, there's nothing else. What do I do with it? The simplest thing in the world. Tomorrow at, uh, shall we say, midnight, you will make a tiny heap of the powder outside Catherine's door. Yes? You will just join the open and bare ends of these wires and place them in the pile. So, check. You will previously take the battery to your own room. What happens then? What happens, she asked. <laughs> the balloon goes up. Actually, you touch the battery with your loose ends, you'll cause a spark at the other end, and that will ignite the incendiary powder. And I burn down Staple Manor. That's fine. Oh, no, no. You will not be so dashed wholesale. Now, how far is your room away from the so-and-so Catherine's? Oh, uh, only up a short staircase. About 20 yards. Good. Now, my dear, you're watching from your little staircase. Immediately, wind up your wire, wrap it round your waist, and yell blue murder. Fire! Murder! Thieves! And anything else you can think of. You must rouse the house and set a good example by rushing out into the grounds. And remember one thing. Cling to Catherine like a leech, so that I'll know her. Now, repeat the lesson after me, so that I can be sure you know your part. I roll the wires from Kathleen's door up to my staircase. Quarter past midnight. I hope Barbara has remembered everything. Good girl. My hat, how that girl can scream. Most disconcerting under some circumstances, but terribly useful just at the moment. <laughs> this should be my cue to enter the grounds as rescuer. Here, Owen, what the... Hello, hello. What's going on there? What's going on? Well, all right, all right. Everybody out on the lawn as soon as possible. Come on, outside all... Very expensive is on each floor. What do you men think you're doing? The whole house will burn down in a minute. Idiots! Oh, you... Oh, you wretched idiot! Charming creature. All right, Miss Kate. Good work, Barbara. Own me at the flat tomorrow. I'm grabbing the charming lady. Uh, come on, Miss. Away from these sparks. You might catch fire, you know. How dare you touch me like that? How dare? Scream not, my charming Kate. Kiss me, Kate. This is your Petruccio. Just my scarf over your head, so. I beg your pardon. <laughs> my hat, you're strong. Well, praise be, I'm stronger. Come into the car with you. Ooh. Uh, uh, must I tie your hands? <laughs> All right, then. <coughs> now, in you go now. <coughs> and, Kate, don't try any tricks, because I'm a very nasty person when I'm frustrated. <laughs> Sorry this is a car not worthy of you, but as a hire and drive yourself, it'll suffice. <coughs> now we're on the way. Would you like me to unwind that scarf and thus enable you to ask me what this is all about? Just nod your head. <laughs> the answer being in the affirmative, we will undo the scarf after I have placed this little crepe mask on my own face. Good. Now, don't wriggle. If you will have promise, in addition, not to attack me in any way, I'll release your hands also. <coughs> I promise, for the time. Who the devil are you? And what is the meaning of this, this outrage? And why have you abducted me, you thunk? One question at a time, fair Kate. Who the devil... I think you said devil. I did. I thought so. Who I am is easy. I am the Grey Goose. Who is he? Oh, first score to you. Your second question, why have I abducted you? Well, why? A little matter of justice, my dear, all of which will be made patent to you in due time. Why do you wear that idiotic crepe mask? Kate, you are quite a plucky girl, and I wish I knew more of you. But I can't, at this juncture, let you see my face. So let us say I wear the crepe effect in mourning for my personality. You know, you can't get away with this. Aren't these supposed to be stupid, senseless things? True. <laughs> All too true. Perhaps I should have called myself a fox. You're not cunning enough for a fox. Huh? You think not? No. You see, when you forcibly dragged me through the main gate, I managed to release the cord of my dressing gown and left it there. The devil you did. You haven't heard the worst yet. I've dropped each of my bedroom slippers, one by one, out of the window of the car. Hmm. That leaves a trail, doesn't it? <laughs> it certainly does. 
for two miles of the way. <laughs> Clever, Kate. <laughs> oh, shut up laughing like that. I should have thought you'd have been scared of being followed. Scared? <laughs> Kate, Clever Kate, we are driving 25 miles at least, you and I. You are garbed in dressing gown. Very charming, too. And pajamas, even more so. Kate, if you're going to carry on leaving a trail, <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this drive more than I anticipated. Oh, you <laughs> impertinent beast. I'll, 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 <laughs> oh, take your hands away, you little idiot. You'll have us in the ditch at any moment. I'll have that mask off you if it's the last thing I do. No. You, all right, all right. You ask for it. No. <sighs> Oh, thank goodness I managed to pull the car up before you wrecked us. You slapped me. I did. And by so doing, probably saved our lives. If you're going to continue like this, I shall not be so particular where I slap you next. You unutterable beast. My father, if ever he catches you, will jail you for this. And I'll come and see you and gloat. I do not think so. I think maybe it'll be the other way round. What do you mean? Sorry, I can't say just now. But Kate, take it from me. It won't be me whom you'll see in jail. Now, Wedge, are you going to behave? No. I'm getting out of this car this minute, and if necessary, I'll walk home. You will not, in bare feet. And if you don't behave, you walk my way, tied to my door handle by this cord round your wrists, while I drive in comfort at a steady few miles per hour. Oh, you, you cur. You wouldn't dare. My dear girl, for the cause I serve, I would dare anything. Have you no pity, no feeling at all? Yes, I have. Sorry as I am to do this to you, it is dictated by pity and feeling. Pity for those of whom I think you've never heard. Oh, stop talking and drive on to wherever we're going. And remember this, you idiot of a goose, grey or hummingbird coloured. You pay dearly for this and the devil take you. Listen again to the adventures of Roland Fletcher, alias the Grey Goose, the story of a modern Robin Hood. <laughs>